Howdy folks, welcome to Introduction to Statistics, Day 7. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to continue with looking at the normal distribution curve and using the standard normal cumulative table uh, and also with z-scores and p-values. Uh, but what we're going to do today is something that I call calculating or identifying cutoff scores. Okay, so cutoff scores. All right, what is a cutoff score? Well, a cutoff score is something like this. Let's say you've got a university uh, that, uh, you know, students send in their applications to go to that university and they have a particular GPA and they took the SAT or the ACT and uh, the university might say something like this. Well, we're only going to take anybody who got at least an 1150 on the SAT. That would be a cutoff score, okay? It's a score that separates one group of people from another group of people, okay? Uh, another cutoff score could be something like this. Uh, we're only going to allow people into this tournament if they have won at least 70% of the games that they played in the season last year. We only want certain people who uh, in this tournament. And so you're setting a criteria this word criteria is very important in statistics and research. We don't necessarily need it right now, but this is your first introduction to this idea of criteria. We are setting a score that is a criteria for being passed on to the next level of assessment. Okay? And so, uh, so we're going to identify, we're going to learn how to identify cutoff scores uh, g given certain situations. Okay? Now, here's the thing about cutoff scores. What we're going to do, basically, is the opposite of everything that we did in the last couple classes. It's all the same stuff, it's just we're moving backwards instead of forwards. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, last couple classes, here's what we learned how to do. We learned how to take some x value, some observation, right? Like we had that uh, situation, uh, we did a situation where uh, there were applicants and they took a test, and they scored a certain level. Uh, and so we said, uh, well, what, what proportion scored higher than 150 or, or 190 or something, right? Well, that number that was given, that is the observation. That is the x value observation. And what we said was our first step was to take that x value and turn it into a z score, right? So we take an x observation, we turn it into a z score, using the formula, which is z equals x minus x bar over standard deviation, right? Then once we have a z score, we use the z table, we go to the z table, and we turn that z score into a p value. Okay, so an x turns into a z, the z turns into a p, and then depending on our situation, if it's a less than situation, that was our answer, if it was a more than situation, then we did 1 minus p as the answer. And if it was a between situation, we did the larger p value minus the smaller p value, right? And then that gave us a final answer. That gave us an answer that was a, a p value answer, a proportion. It gave us a proportion as an answer. That was a, another, another p-value, okay? So we started with an x value, we found the z-score, found the p-value, and then depending on what, what kind of question it was, we moved to a final answer that gave us a proportion. And then sometimes we took that proportion, the next thing we did, and we multiplied it by a population, and we were able to answer the question how many in the population meet this criteria. All right, so here's what we're going to do today. What we're going to do today is we're going to start with a proportion or really a percentage. We're going to turn a percentage into a proportion and then, moving backwards, depending on whether it is a less than or a more than or something like a between question, 
we're going to find a, uh, we're going to uh, turn it into a p-value. Then, remember in the table, how do we use this table? How do we use this z-table? We have a z-score. We go to the edges, find the z-score, and then we, that takes us into the middle of the table, and we find a p-value. Well, if we're moving backwards, then we're going to go into inside of the table first, find a p-value, and then that p-value will give us a z-score. So we're moving backwards. So then that z-score, or that p-value, will help us find a z-score, and or, or z-scores, and then those z-scores, we will then use our z-formula, and solve for x, and we will find an x value. And whatever x value that we find, or the x values that we find, those are the cutoff scores, or that is, or if there's one, that's the cutoff score. So basically what we're doing today is we're doing the entire procedure that you did the other day, only we're gonna do it backwards, okay? And I'm gonna give you a procedure, and we're gonna do it, and we're gonna get it right. Let me set up a question. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're not going to go the whole distance in this first question. We're not going to go all the way back to the uh, x value. All we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back to the next to the last step, which is finding a z-score. And there's three different kinds of problems that you're going to see. There are um, questions that ask uh, for a cutoff score where everything is below that cutoff score, where all the others are above the cutoff score, and the word below is associated with questions that include, for example, let's say you were asked about the bottom 20%. That would be a below question. Or above, you might be asked about the top 10%, like the top 10% of a graduating class of seniors in a high school, right? So you'll have below questions, above questions, and then you have, you have middle questions, okay? And middle questions typically specifically ask, what are the middle numbers? Or they'll say, uh, between what two scores? Or every once in a while, a middle question will say something like, um, a middle question will split, the, will split the top and the bottom. So you'll see the words top and bottom, or above and below in the question, but this question will actually ask for, it'll tell, give you a percentage and tell you to split that percentage between the top and the bottom, or the top and the bottom. And then that basically turns into a middle question because you have two cutoff scores that create a middle, okay? And we'll go over a couple questions like that, all right? So this first one right here says, what z-score has 23% of a normally distributed population below it? So this is basically a less than question. Now here's what you are going to see in all these questions. You are going to see a percentage. And your first step in solving all these problems, the very first step, is to convert the percentage into a decimal, whoops, a decimal p-value. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our, and the way you do that is you divide the percentage, you divide by 100. You divide by 100. Or you move the decimal point over. 23% is the same thing as 0.23, and you may already know that. But another way to do it and make sure you get it right is to divide your, your percentage number. You don't have to put the percentage on, just the 23. Divide it by 100, and you get 0.23. And so now, in this case, our first number is P equals 0.23. Now, P values typically have four digits after the decimal. So what you can do is, instead of putting 0.23, you can put 0.2300. Okay, now, step two, we're back to where we have to decide, well, what kind of problem is it? This is a less than problem. So, we're going to say for, 
for less than or below for less than problems use the p value you have okay so here's what you're about to do and it really depends on what kind of question it is you're about to go into the z table and find this number 0 0.2300 now it's actually it's probably not in here but you're going to find a number close to it, okay? And what I'm saying is this, is if it's a less than problem, then that's the number you're actually going to go in here and look for. Because what this is saying is, it's saying, what z-score has 23% of a normally distributed population below it? Well, 23% is probably somewhere around here. This is 23% below this particular z-score, right? So here's a z-score with 23% of the proportion below that z-score. That puts 77% above it, right? Well, what, what this z-table, all the proportions in here, didn't I already say a couple days ago that all of these p-values are less than p-values? They're all, every one of them is a less than p-value. So we don't have to convert them at all. We don't have to turn them into more than p-values. They're already what we want. We want a less than. This is a less than. These are less than. Now we just got to match them up. So we don't have to make any changes. All right, so that's so step two. We're going to need to leave room for more than before we do the next step. We're going to have to leave room for middle problems. Okay? All right. So now we'll put step three right here. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is look in the Z table for the P value that is closest closest to your p-value, okay? The one that you're working with. This is the one we're working with right here, the one that we, where we divided by 100, and we want 0 0.2300. 2300. We're going to look for 0 0.2300 in the table. Now, all the numbers inside the table are, they are, um, uh, they're in, in order. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to break and I'm going to go to my computer and I'm going to show you and give you, a, I'm going to spend about four or five minutes showing you how to find a z-score based on the table. Okay? All right, folks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to use uh, the standard normal cumulative probability table, which you have. And, um, you know, Here's the Z scores along the edges here and here, and you put the numbers together to get uh, to go in the middle and get a p value. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually going to go backwards. We're going to look at situations where you have a p value and you want to find a Z score. And let me show you some examples here. Oops, that's not my examples. Here's my examples, okay? All right, so we've got six p-values here, and we want to find the z-scores associated with these p-values. And here's what I want you to understand. In most cases, these p-values are not in this table. You'll see here, see this p-value right here, 0 0.0268, and the next one up is 0 0.0274. See there's a big gap between, well, there's kind of a gap between this p-value and this p-value. Uh, this one is 0268 and this is 0274. So you have to ask, well what happened to 0269, 0270, 0271, 0272, and 0273? Because the next thing we get to is 0274. So in most cases, these p-values will not be uh, Act, the actual numbers you see on here. So the rule goes like this, is you pick the p-value that is closest to the given p-value. 
and let me show you what I mean. So let's say we're trying to find the p-value 0 0.3200. So we're going to go into our table here, and these numbers are too small. This is 0 0.02. We want, point, we want 0 0.32. So we're going to go down the table here. Here's 0 0.33. That's kind of close, right? But we got to go less than 0.33. So over here, 0.32, but that's 0.3264, 0.23, uh, 0.3228, and here's 0.3192. So this is too small, and this one is too large. Okay, we want to be in between this one and this one. So the question is, uh, is 0.3200 closer? to 0.3228 or is it closer to 0.3192? Well, it's closer to 0.3192 because this one is 0 0.0008 away from 0 0.3200 and this one is 0 0.0028 away. So this one is closer. So because this one is closer, that is the one we're going to pick for our z-score. And so we're going to go over to the side and you can see the z-score for that is negative 0.4. And then we have to go to the top of the column. Let's scroll up. And it ends with a 7. So this one ends with a 7. And it starts with a negative 0.4. So that means that the z-score would be negative 0.47. And that's all you have to be able to do with this table. So now let's see if we can find uh, the z-score for 0 0.8000. Okay, so let's go down here. And here's 0.82. And here's 0 0.80, but it's 51. Here's 0 0.8023. And here's 0 0.7995. So it's somewhere between these two numbers here. Which one is closer? Well, this one's 23 away. This one's only 5 away, because if you added... 5 more to this right here, it would go up to 0 0.8000. So this is the one we want for our z-score. If we go over to the side, it's 0 0.8. And if we go to the top, it's a 4. So 0 0.84 is our z-score. 0.84. There we go. Now let's find the z-score associated with 0.95. 0 0.9500, 0 .9500 okay? Well, here we have 0.9495, and here we have 0.9505. Well, this is a tough situation, because here, this 0.95, or 9495, that's 0005 away. And this one is also 0005 away, 0.0005 away. So both of these z-scores are equidistant from 0 0.9500, 0, okay? So um, here's what we do in that particular situation. Let's, let's write down both z-scores. 1.64 and 1.65. So our z-scores are 1.64 and, whoops, I want a z, not an x and 1.65. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go halfway between the two. And the one way to go halfway between the two is to add them together and divide by two. And if you were to do that, then the correct answer would be 1, oops, 1.645. Okay, this is the halfway between these two z-scores, and that would be the correct answer. And so that's the one, that's the one, that would, that's what we would write down as our answer. Now let's try this one, 0 0.1700. All right, we're going to have to go up to this first page. All right, here's 0 0.1711, and here's 0 0.1685. This one is 0015 away, and this one's 0011 away. So that means this one is closer. So it's negative 0.9. 5, negative 0 0.95, so negative 0 0.95, okay, that's easy. Now let's try 0 0.0500, all 
All right, well, we're going to have to go up here, somewhere over here. Oh, here we go. 0 0.0505 and 0 0.0495. Well, now we're back in that same situation where this one is 0005 away, and this one's also 0005 away. So we got to go halfway between. So we have negative 1.64 and negative 1.65. So halfway between them is negative 1.645, and that's our z-score. Last one we're going to do here is 0 0.9750. All right, let's go down to where the 0.9s are. Here's some 0.9s. 97, here's a 9750. Oh, look at this. In this case, our number is actually in the table. So when that happens, you just pick that z-score. So we got 1.9, and at the top is a 6. So it's 1.96. And that's how we use the, the, uh, that's how we use the table to find a z-score. So we're basically going backwards. Instead of starting with a z-score and finding a p-value, we're starting with a p-value and going backwards to find the z-score. Okay? All right, so now continue with the lesson where we're going to use this skill to answer some questions. Okay, so now that you know how to look for a z-score uh, by, by starting with a p-value in the z-table, now we can go in this table and we can try and find which z-score is associated with 0.2300, okay? So if I go in here, if I go inside this table here, somewhere around here, Look at this. These are all the, there's a 0.1788. That's too low. Here's 0.3372. That's too high. Here's some 0.2s. There's a 0.23, but that's 0.2358. There's 0.2327. There's 0.2296. So that's too low and that's too high. So now we have to decide, is 0.2296 closer or is 0.2327 closer. And I happen to know, you know, look at this, 0.2296. So that 0.2296, that's only 0 .004, uh, 0 0.004 away from 0 0.2300, the one we're looking for. Okay. 0.2296 is really close, isn't it? The other one, the 0.2327, that's way farther away. So we want the z-score that goes with 0.2296. So let's go over to the side here, and it's at negative zero. Whoops, sorry, I went too far. Look at this. It's right here. We're going to go over to the side here. It's negative 0 0.7. And then let's go back up to the top here, and it's the zero point, whoops, there it is, the 0 0.04 column. And so, that means that our z-score, whoops, switch to blue here. That means that our z-score is negative 0 0.74. So now we have our z-score. We started with a percentage. We turned the percentage into a, into, into a proportion. We looked in the table, found a z-score associated with that. And let's see what the question says. It says, what z-score has 23% of a normally distributed population below it? That's our answer. We're done. Okay? And so we're going to say z equals negative 0. Point, excuse me. Yeah, ne negative 0 0.74. And that's our answer. Okay? Now let's try a more than question. All right, let's look at this problem now. It says, what z-score has 12.3% of a normally distributed population above it. Now this is a more than problem, but it starts off the same way. Step one says convert your percentage, which is 12.3%, but we're just going to write 12.3. Convert the percentage into a decimal p-value. So we're going to divide 12.3% by 100, and that's going to give us 0.123. So our p-value is 0.1230. Okay? And so now it says 
for more than. But this is a more than question. This is not a less than question. And because it's not a less than question, we can't use um, we can't use this uh, p value that we're given. This is a more than question. So what do we do for more than questions? Well, what did we do with more than questions in the last part? Didn't we do 1 minus p to get our correct value? Do 1 minus p. And so in this case, we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.1230. So 1 minus 0 0.1230, what does that equal? All right, well, let's get a calculator here. There it is. 1 minus 0 0.1230 is 0 0.877. 0 0.877, and we'll throw a zero on there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the table, and we're going to find the number 0 0.8770, because what does step three say? Look in the Z table for the p-value that is closest to your p-value. So in here, I'm looking for 0 0.877. And somewhere around here, I got 0 0.9370. That's too high. Here's 0 0.8485. That's too low. But if I, go if I keep following along, 0 0.8621, 0 0.8643, and I'm looking for 0 0.877. So here's 0 0.8729. Here's 0 0.8749. And look. Here's 0 0.8770. That is dead on. I don't need to get one that's close. There's actually, look right there. That's amazing. Good afternoon. We have just had two late sailor buses arrive. Please allow these students a couple of minutes to get to class. Thank you. Yeah, see right here. It's actually 0 0.8770. Dead on. So we don't need the closest one. Well, what Z score is associated with that? If I go to the left, I get 1.1. If I go up, I get 0 0.06, so that's 1.16. So this is a z-score. This is a z-score of 1.16. And the question is asking, what z-score has 12.3% of a normally distributed population above it? Well, that z-score is 1.16. And here's what that looks like on the, on the normal distribution curve. 1.16 is about over here. 1.16, that's our z-score, right? And 12.3% of the pro proportion, 12.3% of all of our outcomes are in this upper tail. That's what we're looking for. But we didn't find it by looking up 12.3 in this table. We looked up 87.7%. That's because if 12.3% is above, then 87.7% is below. But we don't want the below. We want the above. But the table, the Z table, all, everything in here is a below proportion. So in order to use this table, we have to have this first to get this, which answers the question for this. So that's why you have to do this step on the more than. You have to do 1 minus p, then look that proportion up in the table, and that is your z-score. And so in this case, the z-score associated, that cuts off. It, look, it literally cuts off. You know, it's almost like you're cutting off a tail, and there it goes. You're cutting off the top 12.3%. That's what this is asking you to do. Now, we're going to look at a middle percentage question. All right, now let's do a middle percentage. Now, these are a little more challenging, and I highly recommend if you don't understand the analytical way to do it on paper or with a calculator, you could benefit greatly by drawing a normal distribution curve and drawing a picture of what you're trying to understand. Okay, so what we have here is... This question says, what z-scores have the middle 32% of a normally distributed population between them? Okay, so we're, now what we're looking for is we're looking for a middle. We're putting the percentage in the middle between two z-scores. Now, I want to remind you that the normal distribution curve is symmetrical. It is a mirror image of itself left and right. 
And so the middle percentage means that the z-scores that you come up with here, this z-score and this z-score, you're going to need two z-scores because it's between. It's a between question. But here's the cool thing, is that those two z-scores are going to be the same z-score, and one of them is going to be negative, and the other one's going to be positive. Okay? So, let's see here. So, it, we, drew, we drew it here on the normal distribution curve, and so here's what I want you to understand. Running halfway through this region is the mean. And so we can actually cut this middle percentage, cut the middle percentage in half. And so half of 32% is 16%, and there's 16% over here. So we split the 32% into 16 and 16. It's kind of like what we did with the, um, with the empirical rule when we took the middle 68% and split it in half. Now, um, so now, Here's what we want to understand. Really, now all we have to do is find this z-score. And if we find this z-score, then we know that this z-score is the same one, only positive. So here's what I want to remind you. If we go to the halfway point here, right, the halfway point, what is half of the curve? What is the percentage of half of the curve? Well, it's symmetrical, so half of the curve is 50%, right? So starting here, going backwards is 50%. But now look, if we bring this line up here, okay, this is 16%. The whole thing is 50. And here's what I'm telling you, is that if you take your whole 50% and then subtract away, you're going to subtract away this half of that percentage from 50%, what it'll leave you with is 34%, and that 34% is in this region right here, because 34% plus 16% is equal to 50%, the half. So when I, the reason I'm showing you this graphically is so that you can understand what I'm about to put right here when you have a middle question. All right, but before we do that, let's go ahead and do our step one. It says convert your percentage into a decimal. So our percentage is 32% divided by 100. That equals 0.32. We're going to throw a couple more zeros on so that it looks like a p-value from the z table. All right, so it's, it's a 0 0.3200. Now what we're going to do, the first thing we did up here was we split the 32 in half. So for a middle problem, divide the p-value Divide by 2. So we're going to do divide. P divided by 2 first. Okay, divide P divided by 2. So let's go over here. Our P is 0 0.3200 divided by 2. That's going to be 0 0.1600, which is 16%. Then, then subtract that. Then subtract that from 0.5. Subtract from, excuse me, from 0.5. Okay? So we're going to do 0.5 minus 0 0.1600. 0 0.5 subtract 0 0.1600. And that's going to give you a p value of 0.3. Four, zero, zero. That's what you're going to use in step three. Now you may be saying, huh? I don't understand, Mr. Ryan. That's okay. I have another way to show you how to get the exact same number. Okay, so you can write this down right now, or you can write down, I'm going to erase this, just this part right here, and I'm going to show you another way you can get the exact same number every time. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll erase this. Do, do, do. All right. The other way to do it goes like this. We'll do step one, and we get our 0 0.3200. Then, then you're going to do exactly what you did in the more than problem. You're going to do one, okay, do one minus P, right? 
as if it's a more than problem. So let's do 1 minus P, or in this case it's 1 minus 0 0.3200, 0, which gives you 0 0.6400. Okay, so not 64, sorry, 68. 0 0.6800. 0. Then, then divide by 2. Then divide by 2. So now we'll take our 0 0.6800 and divide by 2, and we get 0 0.3400. I know what some of you are thinking is, that's a lot easier, Mr. Ryan. Then that's what you go with. The other way is the way that I learned it, and that's, and that's fine. That's just the way I learned it when I was in statistics. Okay, But I think this way is a little bit easier, so you may want to consider that. Okay, So when it's a middle percentage problem, you can just subtract that from 1, and then divide your result by 2, and that'll give you your less than, that'll, that'll give you the number that you're looking for in step 3. So let's go ahead and look in step 3. Let's go to our table, and we're looking for the number closest to 0 0.3400. So let's go into the table here. It's going to be on the left-hand side. Let's see here. There's a 0 0.1093. Here's a 0 0.37. That's too big. This 0 0.33, that's too small. So let's go this way. There's 0.3409. There's 0 0.3372. Which of those two is closest? This one's uh, 28 away. This one's 9 away. Well, 0 0.0009 away. So that's it. That's our, that's our p-value, 0 0.3409. What's z-score? It's negative 0 0.41. Negative 0 0.41. So our z-score is negative 0 0.41. And so here's what I'm telling you, is that this is negative 0 0.41, and what does that make this one over here? Remember I said that this one will be the, be the same z-score, but positive. So 0 0.41. And so, here's how you write your answer. What z-scores have the middle 32% of a normally distributed population between them? You're going to write plus or minus 0 0.41. Because it's positive, it's negative 0 0.41 and positive 0 0.41. Okay, and that is how you do a middle percentage. Convert your percentage into a p-value. Do one minus that decimal, then divide that number by two, then look that number up in the z-score. You know, let's do another one of those real quick, just because um, this one's a little harder than the first two. Okay, let's do one more. Um, we're going to do one more less than problem. But we're not going to do it graphically. You could do it graphically if you want to. But I'm not going to draw the graph up here. But you should know how to, how to draw the graph. Okay, so let's say that it's, let's say what z-scores have the middle, let's make it a hard one. How about the middle 57.96? percent. The middle 57.96 percent of a normally distributed population between them. But now that we have a procedure, a step-by-step -step procedure, we can follow it and get it right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert our 57.96 into a decimal. So if we divide by 100, we get 0.5796, right? Now, it's a middle, so we're going to do 1 minus P. So we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.5796. Let's get a calculator here. 1 minus 0 0.5796, and we get 0 0.4204. 0 0.4204, that's not the number we need. That's the number we would need if we were doing a more than. We did the 1 minus P. Now we need to divide by 2. So we've got to do 0.4204 and divide it by 2. Divided by 2 gives us 0 0.2102. 0 0.2102. Now we're going to look this p value, this uh, proportion. We're going to look up this p value in the z table and find the p value that's closest to it. Okay, so let's get our z table here. 
We're going to look for 0.2102. 0.2102. Here's 2005 right here. There's uh, 209. 2119. That's 17 away or 0 0.0017 away. Is that right? Two one. Yep. And then this one is 0 0.2090. That's 0 0.0012 away. 17 away, 12 away, 12 is smaller. This is our correct one. That's negative 0 0.81. And so our Z score is negative 0 0.81. And so our answer is plus or minus. 0 0.81, and, and, uh, and that's our answer. So 57.96% of all observations on a normally distributed population are between plus or minus 0 0.81, okay? Now we're going to do one more kind of problem. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go that one step further. So what we, what we just did was we were able to identify the cutoff Z scores now we want to know what the cutoff score is as an X observation in terms of the values that are actually used in whatever, in whatever the situation is. So we want to convert the Z score into real units uh, in the real life situation. So here's what I have. We've got a company gives a test to applicants to predict their job performance. The mean score on the test is 163 with a standard deviation of 32. So I'm going to say X bar is 163 with a standard deviation of 32. And so now what we're going to ask is, what is the cutoff score for the lowest 43.2% of applicants? So what score, what actual numerical score is the cutoff is the cutoff to where 43.2% of all applicants got a lower score than that score. And here's what I want to tell you. The way you find that number is you follow the same procedure that we just did. And then the last step is, the very last step is um, uh, plug into the Z-score, plug into... Plug all, all the numbers that you have into the formula Z equals X minus X bar divided by standard deviation and solve for X. And solve for X. Okay? Because once we, by step three, we will have a Z score. We'll put that here. We have a mean. We'll put that here. We have a standard deviation. We'll put that here. And we're just solving for the X. So let's go ahead and do this. So step one, convert your percentage into a decimal P value. Our percentage is 43.2%. So we want to convert 43.2 divided by 100 into 0.432. And we're going to put a zero on that. So 0 0.4320. Now, this is a lowest percentage. So that's a less than percentage. And therefore, for less than problems, use the p-value you have. So this is what we're going to use. So we're going to look that p-value up in the table, as we've been doing. We're going to look up 0 0.4320. And somewhere around here, let's see, we got 0 0.40, 0 0.44. Let's see. There's, uh, let's see. Now we're going this way. 0 0.4, 2, 4, 4, 3. 4325, that's too high. 4286, that's too low. But this one's closer. And the way you can find out which one's closer is you can key this in the calculator and subtract 0 0.4320. Then key this other one, this 0.4286, and subtract that. And, which, and forget the negative. And whichever number is smaller, that's the number you want. So here it is. So we want. 0.4325, and we're going to go over here, and it says negative 0.1, and then go back, and at the top there's a 7, so it's negative 0.17. So this is z equals negative 0.17. So 
Now we're not done though. This is, now we have to do step four. We have to plug the z into this formula. So here's what we're going to do. We're, we've got z, which is negative 0 0.17, equals x. We don't know what that is yet. That's what we're going to solve for. Minus x bar, the mean, which is 163, divided by the standard deviation, 32. Now you're going to have to solve this algebraically. And the first thing we should do is multiply both sides by 32. So we're going to multiply by 32 on both sides because that's going to cancel the denominator. And so we're going to do that in the calculator. 32 times negative 0.017. Oops, no, 0 0.1. Sorry. Nope, that was wrong. 32 times negative 0.17. Negative 0.17 gives me negative 5.44 equals, these canceled, equals x minus 163. So all we've done so far is multiply z times the standard deviation s. Then to finish up here, we're going to add 163, which is the mean. We're going to add 163 to both sides. So add x bar, okay, so plus 163 gives us x equals 157.56. That is our answer, 157.56, okay? So really, to solve this, to be able to do step four, all you're going to do to do step four is multiply the z, multiply the z that you get in step three, multiply z by s, the standard deviation, then add, the, add x bar, add the mean. And that gives you, that will give you your cutoff score. So what, this is what it's saying, is that 43.2% of all the applicants scored less than 157.56 on this test. That is a cutoff score. So if they're looking to leave out the bottom 43.2%, they can just say, well, anybody who scored less than 157.56 is out. We only want the people who scored higher than 157.56. Okay? Let's do another problem. Okay, so here's our new question. Actually, this is question number two. And here's what we're going to ask. What is the cutoff score for the top 5% of applicants? A lot of times, uh, you know, schools will do this or organizations will do this. They'll say, we want to know who our best people are, who are the top 5%, okay? And maybe this company only wants to interview the top 5 people or the top 5% of people who, who scored on this test. So let's find out what, uh, what the cutoff score is for the top 5% of the applicants. By the way, the SAT kind of works this way too. You know, when you, get your, um, when you get your scores on the SAT, they can tell you what percentile you're in. And that's based on the normal distribution curve. Like let's say you're in the 77th percentile. Well, that means that 77% of all the other people that took that test scored lower than you. And if 77% scored lower than you, then how many scored higher than you? That, that, then 23% scored higher than you, okay? That's based on, the, all those SAT percentiles are based on the, the normal distribution curve. Well, it might not be the normal distribution curve, but they're based on a distribution curve. And I'm sure that it's probably a normal distribution curve or at least close to the normal distribution curve. All right, so let's see what we got. What is the cutoff score for the top 5% of applicants, okay? So step one, convert our percentage into a decimal. So we're going to take 5%, or just 5, and divide it by 100. That's going to give us 0 0.0500. We're just throwing a couple extra zeros on there, right? But this is 5%. This is a more than question, so we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.0500. So we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.0500, and we get 0 0.9500. So this is the number that we're going to deal with, okay? Now we're going to look up 0 0.9500 in the z table and find out what the p-value is. 
Okay, so let's get a let's get a Z table. You should get one out and look it up. But I'm going to show you here. Let's see here, coming over here. And 0 0.99, 0 0.99, 0 0.97, 0 0.96, 0 0.94, here we go. 0 0.945, 0 0.9495 and 0 0.9505. Uh-oh. Those are both just as close to each. So we got 0 0.9505, and that's associated with a z-score of 1.65. And then we have 0.9495, and that's associated with a z-score of 1.64. But these two are equidistant to 0.9500. Now remember what I told you in the, when I explained how to, how to read or how to go backwards in a z-table is that if you find a z-score or a p-value, if you find a p-value that is exactly halfway between your two p-values, you are going to go halfway between the two z-scores. So if you can add them both together and divide by 2. Do 1.64 plus 1.65 and divide by 2. And what, what, what it's going to be is 1.645. There's the halfway point. So our z-score is going to be 1.645. Or Sorry, not p. It's z. We're not looking for a p-value. Z-score, 1.645. So we have our z-score. Last step, you're going to plug it into this formula. So we're going to have 1.645 is equal to x minus the mean, which is 163, divided by 32. And basically what we're doing here is, like I said, basically you're just taking your z, multiply it by the standard deviation, and add the mean, okay? Because it's the same formula every single time. 1.645 times 32 is 52.64 is equal to x minus 163. Now add the mean. Add 163 and we get 215.64 equals x. So the answer here. The score where 5%, the top 5%, the score where only 5% of the people scored higher than that number is 215.64. And so what they may say is, bring us anyone who scored higher than 215 point, they'll probably say higher than 215. Bring us all those people, those are the people that we want to interview because those were the top scorers on this test. Okay? All right. Let's, uh, we're going to do one more problem. We're going to do a middle problem. All right, so look at this question here. It says, what two scores are the middle 25% of applicants between? Okay, so basically we're going to do the same thing we did with middle problems previously where we're looking for, where we're looking for a, uh, um, uh, two z-scores, right? But remember, those two z-scores are going to be the same z-score. One of them's negative, one of them's positive, right? So it's going to be plus or minus. However, those two z-scores, even though they have the same z-score value, they're going to have different score values. So you're actually going to have to do two separate calculations for step four. You're going to have to do step four twice, okay? So let's do this. It says convert the percentage into a p, uh, decimal p-value. So we'll take 25% and 25 divided by 100 because this is 25 per 100. That's what percent means. It means per 100. So writing it as a fraction, 25 per 100 is equal to 0.25. Then it's a middle. So we're going to do 1 minus P. So we're going to do 1 minus 0.25. That's going to give us 0.7. And we can put a couple zeros on here, put a couple zeros on there. So we've got 0.7500. Then we're going to divide that number by 2. So we're going to do 0 0.7500 divided by 2. Let's grab a calculator on this one. I don't want to make a mistake on video. Divided by 2. I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes on video, but I don't want to make another one. I got 0.375. So that's 0.375, and we'll throw an extra 0 on there. So now we need to find the z-score associated with 0.3750. Grab our p, p chart here, right? Let's go in here and we'll look for 0.375, somewhere around here. 
There's three, there's three, five, three, nine, three, six, three, seven, three, seven, four, five, and three, seven, eight, three. The three, seven, four, five, that's closer, right? So our Z score is negative 0 0.32, negative 0 0.32. All right, so our Z score is negative 0 0.32. And it's actually not zero, it's plus or minus 0 0.32. So we have two Z scores now. We have negative 0 0.32 and we have positive 0 0.32. So what we have to do is we have to set up two separate z-score formulas to solve for two different x values. So we would have negative 0 0.32 is equal to x minus, the mean is 163, divided by the standard deviation is 32. And then the second one would be positive 0 0.32 is equal to x minus 163, divided by the standard deviation of 32. And for both of these formulas, we're going to multiply the z by the standard deviation and then add the mean. So here, let's grab a calculator. Let's multiply negative 0 0.32, negative 0.32, times 32, the standard deviation. And we get negative 10.24. So we have negative 10.24 is equal to x minus 163. Now we're going to add 163 to that. And we get 152.76 is the, is the score. That's one, of our, that's one of the scores. Let's do the other one here. Now we have 0.32 times 32. And that's going to be 10.24. Notice over here it was negative 10.24, and over here it's positive 10.24. If you're working on a middle percentage, it's always going to work out like that. Is equal to x minus 163, and now we're going to add 163. And that gives us 173.24, and that is our upper score. And so the answer is, what two scores are the middle 25% of the applicants between? Well, the middle 25% of applicants scored between 152.76 and 173.24, okay? And that's how you do a middle percentage problem. And that's all I have for you for day seven, okay? On the worksheet, I have several problems for you. I, uh, I uploaded a quiz that should uh, give you a chance. You can take it a bunch of times and, and really learn through that. But um, but that's all I have for you for day seven. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.